Hey folks, what's going on? Air of Carthage here, and uh, not long ago I showed you how to build your own PC. I went through it step by step. We used this MSI B450 Tomahawk Max because MSI is kind enough to sponsor the channel. I love getting to make stuff like this for you to show you how to build your own PC. Obviously, I love Total War games. There's a lot of other games out there, and I just love encouraging people to build their own PC. Now, AMD is really hot in the PC building market right now, and it's a great choice. But Intel has also recently released their 10th generation uh, processors, and one of them in particular, the i5-10600K, looks very promising for gaming, and I was very excited to show you all. Um, we did this AMD build, and I also want to do one on Intel, so MSI was kind enough to send me this MAG Z490 Tomahawk motherboard, which has the new uh, flagship chipset for Intel uh, to help power these 10th gen processors. Now, Z490 is equipped for overclocking and has a very rich feature set that's going to allow you to build a gaming PC that you can expand on uh, almost unlimitedly in terms of like extra storage, memory speeds, memory support, um, all kinds of stuff. Tons of system fan headers, stuff for RGB, everything you're going to need to build either anywhere from like kind of a mid-range PC all the way up to a top-of-the-line uh, gaming PC. So this board is a really great option. Um, of giving you uh, the best feature set without necessarily having to pay out the highest price. So it's going to be a bit of an unboxing here. If you all do want to see step-by-step -step instructions on building a build, I will do the steps of installing the processor and stuff here so you can see it on this motherboard, but all the other steps are the same with the Ryzen build I did, so go reference that if you want to see the other steps. Here I'm mostly just going to focus on the Intel-specific stuff and the Z490 Tomahawk, and MSI's Tomahawk has just almost become a legend as chipset after chipset, new processor after new processor, the Tomahawk just kind of remains this awesome um, option for really great performance and uh, not being the highest tier price, and the Z490 Tomahawk is no exception to this rule. I'm going to give you a quick rundown here on how to install a 10th gen Intel processor, um, even though there is a new socket here. It's the LGA, uh, I think it's 1200 rather than the 1151. It's really not any different than the 1151 in the terms of the way it stalls. You just lift this lever, pull back to release the uh, the, the clamp here that's going to, I don't really, I guess the cover. Do not touch the pins. If you bend the pins, it is very bad. This is one of the parts of building that you do need to be a little bit careful, but as long as you're smart, you're good. You just kind of hold the processor around the edges. It'll have a triangle that lines up with a, uh, you know, a small triangle you'll be able to see in the socket when you have this thing closer. It'll only fit the right way. It requires no pressure. You just lay it in place. You don't push down on anything. You don't cram anything right there. It's just making sure it was seated properly with a very gentle, um, uh, you know, nudge. And then you just kind of lay the uh, cover back down over it. Again, we don't touch the pins. <laughs> And everything's good. As you start to put pressure down, the plastic cover that was protecting the pins will pop off. And you just put the lever down. And it's that simple to install an Intel processor. You can see my son over here also approving with his own thumbs up. Now let's take a look at some of the features on the board. One of the first things we have here is a couple of M.2 slots with a heat sink. It's a fantastic feature for those high-speed drives. There are six SATA ports. You can see four here. There's two on the front, a USB 3, uh, a USB-C connector. Got your 24-pin power there. There's your extra SATA port. So you have tons of storage options. There are six fan headers, extra USB headers. And then the back of the board, the input-output is no less rich. Um, tons of USB-A connectors, a Type-C, a 2.5-gig LAN, a 1-gig LAN, uh, did, you know, um, optical sound, everything you could need on the back of the board. So really fantastic layout, very feature-rich, four DIMM slots, dual-channel memory, um, it's got debug LED lights, really just a great board to build with. Now, for some of you may be wondering what some of these features mean, um, basically what I was just going through, uh, if you're newer to this building thing, is that this board's very expandable. You can add lots of memory to it. You can see here the four RAM, I said DIMM slots, um, so you can add up to four sticks of RAM. I'm putting in um, 16 gigs right now. This is very fast, um, 3600 speed memory. Sorry about the autofocus going back and forth here a little. Obviously, my main job is not a cameraman. I'm just showing you how to install this stuff. Like I said, up to four sticks. So, very uh, again, very upgradable in the future. The two M.2 slots give you tons of room for extremely fast storage and great gaming drives. 
and all the internal USB headers and those that I showed you on the rear input output give you a ton of flexibility in how many devices you connect. You know, sometimes when you're gaming, you need a good mic. You want to have your headset plugged in, a mouse, a keyboard. You might, like myself, I run a stream deck. You might have speakers. You have a lot of devices, so it's really important to have all these extra plugs so that you don't run out of space. And then the internal headers allow you to add even more. Now, I'm, I'm right now just installing the cooler on here. I'll let you all see some of this footage just so you get an idea. Again, maybe some of the few differences between an Intel and a Ryzen build, but, you know, n not a lot, really, in terms of the knowledge you need to have in order to build. And otherwise, I'd rather just kind of focus on another few of the key reasons why this motherboard is pretty exciting. Now, in this case, I'm using a, a, a Noctua air cooler. I used it in the last build. If you want to see, you know, the product stuff, uh, again, check out that, that last Ryzen video that I'll have linked because um, it covers that cooler. This gives us a little room to overclock, and that's actually one of the really exciting features about the Mag Tomahawk here um, and the Intel i5-10600K. It is a very overclockable processor. Um, I'm going to link a video in the description to Gamers Nexus where he talks a lot about how to overclock this processor and get the most out of it. And when he does so, um, he's able to get the 10600K to game at the exact same level as the i9-10900K, which is a substantially more expensive processor. It's twice as much. And so with the, just a little tweaking and having a capable motherboard like this, you can go, you can look at someone like Gamers Nexus, and you can get your processor just flaming fast. It's really fantastic. It's one of the reasons why Intel processors are actually really exciting. They're very good overclockers, and uh, this one is no exception to that rule. Some people may say, Air, why does overclocking even matter? Can I just run the PC? You absolutely can, and MSI's motherboard definitely helps you get the most out of this thing without ever even having to touch overclocking. In fact, it even has some automatic options uh, for those who don't wish to uh, have to learn all this on your own. You can just go into the BIOS and you can do some automatic things to boost the, pro um, the power of your processor without having to know all the intricate settings. What I'm really getting at in all this is that it gives you max flexibility. MSI gives you all the tools you need in this board in order to get the most out of the processor over the span of its life. And that's kind of why uh, overclocking is cool and can be important. It can help extend the life of your processor, give you better performance uh, in games. Now, I say extend the life of the processor. I mean... By upping the performance, it can be uh, useful even in years later as processors start to have faster stock speeds, your older processor may still be able to keep up. Now, if you don't take care of it and you overclock and overheat it, yes, that can actually <laughs> not be a good thing. So make sure you know what you're doing, but I'm just saying this gives you a lot of cool options in that regard. Now, it wouldn't be any type of, you know, even partial build video if we didn't get some thermal paste shots in here. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, uh, this, this used to scare me when building a PC, doing thermal paste. It's actually not that hard. On an Intel processor, you just need a little dab of it. It really doesn't take much, something about the size of a grain of rice uh, on this type of Intel processor. A little bit more if you're using their big HEDT processors. But, yeah, again, just wanted to throw this footage in just to, again, show you all some of the little detail difference between the Ryzen and the Intel build, um, but it's really nothing substantial. If you can do one, you can probably figure out the other just fine by just watching a couple little simple things like this. Uh, but anyway, as we attach the cooler, what I'm hoping for with this build, like I said, is that it gives you all a second option. You now can look at what AMD has to offer, and you can now look at what Intel has to offer. And the cool thing is, is that MSI has a lot of great options for both. And honestly, the Tomahawk um, easily come as recommendations from me on both. I've used both these boards in a, in a second build here uh, in my studio. I've gamed on them. In fact, I've, you all probably wouldn't even notice, but I've actually recorded some videos recently on this system. And I promise you, you probably won't even notice the difference uh, between this and my standard build, which cost a whole lot more. Um, and so I'm just trying to show you that, uh, you know, even though some may think, well, Air, you got to... You got a whole bunch of resources and money, and so that's why all your stuff looks good. Now, you can build your own gaming computer that's really fantastic. Uh, th this computer right here will run Warhammer 2 on Ultra 1080p, no problem. Uh, no problem. It'll, it'll just cut right through it. Um, and uh, you can probably run on, you know, decent settings even at 1440p. Um, I am going to combine this thing with an RTX 2060 graphics card, which to me is a great point to be at. If you're above it, then the experience is just going to get better. But if you have at least that 2060... I mean, you're going to get a fantastic experience in all the games out there right now, not just Total War. And even though I'm pairing it with an RTX 2060 here, 
This processor is totally capable of being paired all the way up to the 2080 Ti. It's not going to bottleneck that 2080 Ti. So that's another cool thing about, uh, again, this motherboard and the processor that I'm showing you here is that you can kind of make it a mid-range build, but it can go all the way up to a top-of-the-line build. And one thing about the, the Tomahawk motherboards that's, again, no exception to the Z490 is, man, do they look good. It's got this very nice black aesthetic to it, just like it did on the B450 Max. Makes it very easy to match and look good in your system, especially, you know, in today's world where a lot of folks have uh, transparent side panels. Yeah, and again, you can just see the aesthetic. It, it seems, it's very easy to be clean. Yes, I know there's a few wires hanging out in the front up there in the top. It bugs me, too. I just I end up zip tying them up later. Um, so yeah, I get them all out of the way, but these boards allow you to have a really clean build. I'm going to finish things off here with the graphics card. This is our RTX 2060. This thing's going to be a great way to get, you know, really solid performance in every game out there. And I'll show you all what that performance looks like. I have uh, a few benchmarks coming up, but before we get there, I want to show you what the uh, computer looks like booting up so you can get a feel for the aesthetic. So here we go. First time powering it on. And when you push the button and... Fans start spinning and lights turn on. That is typically a good sign. If those things don't happen, then you done screwed up. <laughs> um, th lots of things can happen, and, and no one's immune to it. I've built a lot of computers, and sometimes I, I will still screw up and have to go fix a few things. But everything's going to work really good here. Um, this uh, case has the one RGB fan to kind of help light up the interior of the case. And then the uh, Tomahawk motherboard itself has some very nice uh, RGB accents, as does the case. Um, of course, you can turn all this off in the MSI Mystic Light app if you want and just run this thing blacked out inside, which is, again, another reason why I really like this board because if what you're into is just very plain, simple, and clean, then this board suits both audiences. You can, you can really put all the RGB on it, and I'll show you the case here in just a second. It does have some, some beautiful accents, or you can just make it very standard and very clean. But as for me, I, I like all the RGBs. Yeah, I know. I'm one of those. <laughs> I'm one of those. Looking very nice. Anyway, I uh, did get into BIOS the very first time. Everything's working as intended. I ran it through, I ran it through a few benchmarks. Uh, the first one was the Total War Warhammer 2 battle benchmark. We ended up with almost 80 frames a second on average at 1080p ultra preset. So again, this is kind of a no compromises build. We're well over 60 frames a second in a very demanding game. And you'll be able to play Total War Warhammer 2 all out. No compromises. And much the same is going to be true in Three Kingdoms, which is another newer title. It operates a little different than Warhammer. It, it does tend to run at a little lower frames, even on my very expensive like i9-9900K build. So this is nothing out of the ordinary. This is running extremely good. Again, 1080p ultra preset. Again, no compromises in Three Kingdoms. Now, as far as 3D Mark Time Spy, which again is just kind of a more general benchmark, I ran it. Uh, the number one build here is the one with the uh, Intel, and then the number two there is the Ryzen 35 or 5 3600 that we built last time. Very strange here that the graphics card actually performs better on this Z490 board. Sometimes Time Spy can be a little eccentric with things like this. I wouldn't read too much into it. I ran the benchmarks on Total War. I don't have the screenshots here. We were within four to five frames per second between these two builds and Total War. Time Spy and it can be a little different. Yes, these scores are quite a bit different than each other. The Intel one's obviously doing better in Time Spy, but uh, I mean, if you're just curious, like how much difference between the two, uh, not a ton, but it does go to show that Intel does still win the gaming battle, which is why I wanted to show you this, uh, because if you're one of those enthusiasts that's like, hey, look, I, I want the best when I game because gaming is what I do, then this is it. And so, again, another reason why I wanted to make sure you all saw this. So we'll wrap it up with a quick conclusion here with a couple more views of this Z490 Tomahawk. Fantastic motherboard. Great way to get into the new Intel 10th Gen platform. It's got all the features you needed that we covered earlier. You can see it's going to play your Total War games all out. It's really good at it. Any other game you want to throw at it, it's going to take it. If you have any more questions about this build, let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to uh, kind of answer that for you and talk to you a little bit um, about uh, whatever your questions are. Um, so, like I said, let me know. Thanks to MSI for sponsoring the video. Again, I'll have links in the description if you want to see some independent reviews of this board and then also some videos that talk about how to overclock this processor and get the most out of an Intel system similar to this when you're gaming. Anyway, signing off for now. Uh, Air of Carthage out, and I will see you all with some more uh, PC building in the future.